Hi everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the battery management system for lithium-ion battery packs. It supports 8 to 16 cells in series from 24 volts to 48 volts nominal. Take the 16 cells in series, 48 volts, and 100 ampere PCB as an example. This is the connector for data collecting cable and the diode and resistor for cell balance. This one, transformer to provide the DC power supply to the chips. Then the communication section and storage and clock section. 300 ampere and 75 millivolt shunt resistor. Measurement accuracy within 0.5%. MCU, analog front end ICAFE, external switch connector, LCD screen connector. Current limiting section, optional heating section, charging and discharging MOSFET and MOSFET drive. This one for communication between battery and inverters, with CAN bus interface, operating a baud rate of 500 kilobits per second, and RS-232 RS-485 optional. RS-485 interface for communication between parallel battery packs and upper computer system software. 4 capacity lights, 1 running light, and 1 alarm light. DIP switch. For pack address setup. Reset button. Pre-charge circuit. Inductance. For current limiting circuit. Capacitors. Battery for clock. Aluminum sheet for heat transfer. Now, let's take a look at how the BMS manages and controls the battery pack. Voltage monitoring. Through the wire harness connected at the positive and negative terminals of each cell, AFE gets the individual cell voltage and pack voltage and transmit the data to the MCU in real time. The MCU reads the individual cell voltage and pack voltage values. If the individual cell voltage or the pack voltage exceeds the overvoltage warning threshold, whichever comes first, MCU will transmit the warning signal to inverter and ask the inverter to decrease the charging current to 10 ampere via CAN bus. Then when the voltage exceeds the overvoltage protection threshold, the charging MOSFET will cut off and the battery cannot be charged. To avoid damages caused by the malfunction of charging MOSFET, if MCU detects the voltage value as 30 MV exceeds the overvoltage protection threshold, MCU will ask the inverter for a charging current of 0 ampere until the voltage value recovered. If the individual cell voltage or the pack voltage is lower than the under voltage warning threshold, whichever comes first, MCU will transmit the warning signal to inverter and ask the inverter for a 0 ampere discharging current so as to keep the battery from worn out. If the voltage value is lower than the under voltage protection threshold, whichever comes first, the discharging MOSFET will cut off. Cell balancing. When charging, if an individual cell voltage value exceeds 3.35 volts, and the voltage difference of maximum voltage cell and minimum voltage cell exceeds 30 millivolts, MCU sends a control signal to AFE and turns on the cell balance switch so that the power of the high voltage cell is dissipated in the resistor and the charging can continue until all cells are fully charged. Temperature monitoring. When charging, if the cell temperature, ambient temperature, or PCB temperature exceeds the high temperature warning threshold or is lower than the low temperature warning threshold, MCU will transmit the warning signal to inverter and ask the inverter to decrease the charging current to 10 ampere via CAN bus so as to make the temperature recover to normal. If the temperature continuously increases to the high temperature protection threshold or decreases to the low temperature protection threshold, the charging MOSFET will cut off and MCU will still ask the inverter for a charging current of 10 ampere to make sure it's charging immediately when the temperature recovered. When discharging, if the cell temperature, ambient temperature, or PCB temperature exceeds the high temperature warning threshold, or is lower than the low temperature warning threshold, MCU will transmit the warning signal to inverter and ask the inverter for a 0 ampere discharging current. If the temperature continuously increases to the high temperature protection threshold, or decreases to the low temperature protection threshold, the discharging MOSFET will cut off, remaining capacity monitoring. 
If the remaining capacity is lower than 9%, MCU will transmit the warning signal, with emergency light on, to the inverter through the CAN bus circuit, and ask for a 0 ampere discharging current from the inverter. If the remaining capacity is lower than 5%, MCU will transmit the warning signal, with both emergency lights on, to the inverter through the CAN bus circuit, and request for charging from the inverter. Current monitoring. BMS measures the current flow through the shunt resistor. When charging, if the current value exceeds the overcurrent warning threshold, BMS will transmit the warning signal to the inverter and ask the inverter to decrease the charging current to 10 ampere via CAN bus. If the current value exceeds the overcurrent protection threshold, the charging MOSFET will cut off. And the BMS still asks for a charging current of 10 ampere to make sure battery charging again when current recovers to normal. When discharging, if the current value exceeds the overcurrent warning threshold, BMS will transmit the warning signal to the inverter and ask the inverter for a 0 ampere discharging current via CAN bus. If the current value exceeds the overcurrent protection threshold, the discharging MOSFET will cut off, and the BMS still asks for a discharging current of 0 ampere to make sure battery discharges again when the current recovered to normal. Charging current limiting. When the active current limiting function was turned on, the current limiting MOSFET of BMS keeps connected. And the charging current will be limited to 10 ampere. And if passive current limiting turned on. When the charging current exceeds the overcurrent warning threshold, the current limiting MOSFET will be connected, and the charging current will be limited to 10 ampere. BMS will detect the charging current every 5 minutes to check if it is back to normal. If the charging current decreased and was lower than the overcurrent warning threshold, the charging current will recover to normal. Pre-charge. When connected with loads, BMS turns on the pre-charge function and charges the capacitor of loads for one second. The charging time can be configurable from 1 millisecond to 5,000 milliseconds. Then the charging and discharging MOSFET will be connected to avoid short circuit caused by a large current during startup. Battery monitor software. After connected successfully, the cell voltage, voltage difference, pack voltage, current flow, battery information and temperature, and battery status, are listed at the home page. In the battery information section, the total capacity value is calculated at the first time when the battery pack completes a full charge cycle, and the nominal capacity is preset. Click the upload parameter menu, all the BMS parameters, and the control switches can be edited and stored. and 485 menus to choose the protocol that needed. Click the SN to get the battery serial number, which will be needed when applying for a warranty. Thanks for watching. Any questions or ideas, please leave a comment.